Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Seated. I want to thank Brother Enzi for inviting me to speak to the student body in this chapel service, and uh, I hope that the time that I spend here this morning will be a blessing to all of you, and if not all of you, those who will respond to the Word of God. Now, Brother Enzi said being born in Mississippi wasn't the unpardonable sin, but it sure helps you on your way to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> we were born in Mississippi 46 years ago. I was born next to the church and was in church the next day and have been in church almost every day since. Praise God. I was raised in the church. I've had the Holy Ghost for 36 years. Wow. I've been preaching now for some 23 years. And uh, I don't feel like I'm a newcomer at this. I have watched people start and stop. I've watched many past me who were going so strong but uh, it's not how fast you're running it's whether you win the race or whether you win the race but the fact that you're in the race and uh, some of us might not be as fast as others or we may not kick off as quick as others but that does not mean that we're not going to make it because we're on our way and we have set goals and our goals can be reached only if we continue to push for them. Trials sometimes knock us down. Disappointments sets us back. But nothing can stop us if our minds are made up that we're going to make it in spite of all the circumstances and life is full of those circumstances and there are discouraging times even at school I know a little bit about that and uh, during those times we have God that we can look to and depend on because he is an ever present help even in the time of needs and uh, there are those who lose out in the severest of trials, but there are others who become strong. And so we can become the latter, the stronger. And when it's all over, when all the dust is cleared and everything seems to fade away, we have become a stronger person because of the things that he has given us. And sometimes, I told someone the other day, I said, the trial that you're going through and the things that seems to be so bad, at this point you cannot understand how it could ever be any good come out of that. But the day will come when you will be able to look back and see where that was the making of you. It's not when you're dancing the aisles or giving a message in tongues and interpretation or when you're prophesying or any other thing. It's not when you're praying in the Spirit that makes you the strongest. It's when you come through that weakest point and you succeed. That is the making of a person. Uh, and so we thank God for those bad days because when the good days come, that's just easy going. And in the process of this, 
uh, our lives become stronger and we look back and we see that day and we remember it as the turning point or the strengthening point in our lives. And uh, I can look back today and I can see sometimes that at the point I could not understand them, but later on I understood. It was like David said one time. David said, when I saw the wicked and uh, I saw them prospering, he said, I didn't understand it. I could not fathom how they could prosper. But he says, when I went to the house of the Lord in the, the sorest calamity of his life and he knelt down and started talking with God, it was after his commune with God that he understood their things are only temporal. Ours is going to be everlasting. And they will need those blessings down here because that's all they're ever going to get. But while we might suffer in some things, overall, we're going to succeed. Now, if I do not preach like you think I should, uh, you won't be the first person thought that. I was at one place preaching one time and they were having church problems and uh, the pastor got up right before I preached and he said uh, I understand someone around here said they was going to grind my meat he said I just want to tell you you won't be grinding fresh meat because I've been ground before so from time to time we will go through some things that look like we've been through the meat grinder but uh, if you live long enough, you'll be reground again. But in the process, it all makes for a better person. Let's get to the word here. Numbers 25. Numbers, numbers 25. And uh, verse number 11. Phineas, the son of Elzor, the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with a Midianitish woman, was Zimmerai, the son of Zelu, a prince in the chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosba, the daughter of Zur, who was head over a people and of a chief house of the Midians. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peora, and in the matter of Cosba, the daughter of the prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peora's sake. You can be seated. When I knew that I would be here today, it was this scripture that seemed to stand out so strong in my mind. And I'm sure that what I'm going to say concerning this scripture won't fit everybody, but there are some here that it will fit and help if they will allow it to. And I want to use for a subject this morning... Uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize. Most of us, many of us, I would not dare say none of us, but the most of us will never win the Nobel Peace Prize. There is only a few people each year that win this coveted award that was that is presented on a yearly basis uh, 
as a grant for a master achievement in the fields of science, uh, medicine, uh, literature, and uh, there's about five or six different areas each year. Sometimes when doctors have worked and succeeded in a certain area, these two doctors will share in this particular feel uh, the prize because they were co-workers in the inventing or in the founding or making of some type of medicine that would be a cure to a certain disease. Sometimes there are those who win it in the area of writing literature. To my knowledge, I stand correcting, but to my knowledge, there has never been a person who won the Nobel Peace Prize for religion. There has been a few rebels who won it because of their stand uh, in certain areas, and I won't go into that. But it is, as far as my knowledge, I do not know of anybody winning the Nobel Peace Prize for religion. And so there stands the opportunity for we as students this morning to excel in a certain field. And immediately I know the response of, of some of you, Brother Bourne, that would be impossible. Impossibilities is only framed by the smallness of our thinking. And I think if we set our minds in the beginning that we will not make it, then we might as well forget it because we're not going to make it. But if however the struggle, we push ourselves to excel, then we begin to excel, and it might take a while. The Nobel Peace Prize was set up by Mr. Nobel, who was the inventor of dynamite this black powder that was used in explosives. He made uh, many, many millions of dollars in his lifetime. He did not leave his money to anybody. He left it in a trust. And the interest that occurs on that each year is divided equally among uh, the recipients of this prize. Uh, last year, I believe the prize for each one of those winners was $220,000 tax-free money. Uh, I would like to win that this year, monetarily. Who would not? But uh, the chances for all of us winning it would be slim because five or six out of five billion people a year and sometimes because of the fact that it's divided, it might be as high as 8 or 10 winning this prize. But I want to bring us to another point here uh, today. We do not always uh, do things because it is a popular thing. Sometimes we do things because it is the right thing to do. The Bible says that Moses had given an order. He said, I do not want any of our people going down to the religious festival that is being put on in Midian. Because during this religious festival, it gets out of hand. And this thing gets out of hand until uh, their, their festival turns into a religious rite. And in the, in the rites of their religion, they start doing things that is immoral and ungodly to the extent that it supersedes the thoughts of the mind. And he says, I do not want you going down there when they start their festival. And all of a sudden, young men started dying. And when Moses checked in on this thing, uh, by this time, 24,000 young men had died because they had disobeyed the word of their leader. And so at that point, Moses had to do something to stop the deaths. First of all, they were not supposed to go down 
and involve themselves with the world. There is a trend in our society, and when I say society, I'm talking about our churches, to do away with the uh, closeness of God and the separation of the world. And it is time that somebody stands up and separates themselves from the world and the things that the world offers. There are good-looking men out there for the girls. And there are beauties out there for the men. But sometimes uh, the price you have to pay is not worth the prize. You know, there are those who think because of who they are. Someone told me some time ago, they said, Brother Bourne, when I married, I felt like in my mind that there was no way for me to lose because of who I was and who my daddy was and who the daddy of my wife was. We were going to be an instant success because of the name. Of who we were. And uh, I said there's no way for us to go down. Because we're going to be an instant success. Success is not made on your parents. It's not made on where you come from. It's what you make of yourself. My son, Romy told me or asked me to help him pray about a situation. I had prayed for him and with him through a lot of things. But one day I looked at him and I said, Son, you're 25 years old. I can pray and get an answer. But it's time that you learn how to get an answer for yourself. And my advice to you is to fall on your face until you're able to get an answer he said, well, Daddy, I need an answer from God. I said, well, learn how to get it yourself. I will pray that you will learn how to touch God. But I can't make it on what my dad was or my granddad was. I can't make it on what my pastor was. I am an individual, and I have got to learn how to fight my own battles and be a, an identity of myself. I cannot get a bunch of tapes and learn how to preach like this man or speak like this man. I've got to be my own. I am not another individual. I am not a clone. I hate clones. Let's be an individual. And if your speaking is not like the most eloquent, just do what God has given you to do and seek the face of God and let him guide you. And God will open up the door for you on the strength of your prayers and not on your ability. Because if you go on your ability alone, you will fall on your face as this person did. Feeling that he did not need to pray because he had it made. He had the name. Name is not enough. The Bible tells me that uh, these boys were dying. They were dying by the thousands. And Moses says, we've got to stop them. They cannot go down there anymore. And then all of a sudden, here come a boy in who was the successor in years to come to one of the 12 tribes of Israel. His granddaddy, Simeon, was one of the leaders of the 12 tribes. And he thought in himself, if I can be the successor of my granddad and one day I will be one of the 12 patriarchs, I don't have to listen to this man. I'm going to be a leader myself. The Bible tells me that uh, this man, uh, Zimmerai, he come walking into camp with a young lady hanging on his arm. And this girl's name was Cosba. Zimmerai, the Bible tells me, the son of Selu, a prince of the chief house among the Simeonites. He was actually the grandson of Simeon. He went down to Midian 
And he found the ambassador's daughter, the daughter of Zor, a head over the people and a chief among the house of the Midianites. And if Cosmo was not a prize to be won, there probably was not one. And while Moses was on his face crying, he and Aaron asking God to give them an answer. If you'll read here in chapter 25 of Numbers, the Bible tells me that uh, Zimmerai with Cosba on his arm come walking in and walk right down by the church as if to say, I'm alive and I've got me one of those girls and I'm still standing on my feet and I haven't died. And I want to show you, Moses, that I can do it and survive. You may survive. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if your dad is the greatest preacher and the most renowned in the world. You've got to give an answer to God for yourself. And the sooner you learn that, the better off you're going to be. Hallelujah. Now, Zimmerai walked in, the Bible says, and while they wept before the altar, that uh, Zimmerai walked by with this girl on his arm, the ambassador's daughters. I have gone down and found the chief prize in the whole camps of the Midianitish people. This is the most beautiful girl that could be found. Why, I will have both worlds in my hand. I'm going to be uh, the leader of the Simeonites and I'm also going to be the leader of the Midianites. Because when we unite in marriage, I will be over the, one of the 12 tribes. And I will have control over Midian. Because her granddad is the chief over the Midianitish people. It doesn't always work that way, friend. Because there is an answer that we've got to give to God. Moses wept. Aaron wept. They looked around and they saw this uh, ultra uh, thought in the minds of Zimmerai. I'm going to prove to them what I can do and no one can stop me. They looked around and said, is there not anybody that can stop the belligerent defiance of the commanded word of God? Is there not anybody who would stand against this sin? Is there not anybody who would stand up and say, I'm tired of sin in the way that it is projected and especially here. We already are preparing for 24,000 funerals. And in the face of 24,000 funerals, we have a young man who walks in before the altar and saying, I can do it and get away with it. But that does not mean that you're going to get away with it. All of a sudden, someone stood there and they looked at the defiance and they wondered what can be done. And to make matters worse, the scripture then says that Zimmerai took this lady and he walked into a tent. And when they went into that tent, uh, the immorality that was going on those men stood there with tears running down their face, Brother Enzi, knowing that the defiance of this man was going to break the moral law also. And all of a sudden, there was a young man by the name of Phineas. He was the grandson of Aaron. He said, the Bible says he walked over and picked up a javel. And he said, I'll stop this sin. I'll be a buffer between right and wrong. And the, the scripture tells me that he walks over and kicked the tent flap open and took that javel and drove it down through both of them in the midst of their hideous acts that they were going through. The Bible says he pinned them to the ground with a javel. And all of a sudden, the matter of Peora was settled. And the deaths stopped. And there was a peace that come over the camp. And Aaron and Moses quit weeping. Because it was at that moment that the voice of the Lord spoke. And saying, because Phineas 
has stopped the plague. I shall give to him and his seed after him an everlasting covenant of peace. From this day forward, when you hear the name Phineas, you're going to hear about peace. Hallelujah. I may not get the coveted Nobel Peace Prize, but if I from God can receive a covenant of peace where I can walk into or out of my home and feel the peace of the Lord as I walk in and out, when I walk into the church or out of the church, if I can feel that peace of the Lord and my children can see that there's peace. Uh, let us move on for a few generations. One day a little boy walks in. He says, why is everything so peaceful around here? What is that plaque you got hanging on the wall, granddaddy? He said, well, uh, many years ago I stood up against sin. You may not be able to stop it in anybody else's life, but you're in charge of your own life. And if you want to start, why don't you start with your own life this morning? Take the javel and drive it through the besetting sins that tempts your mind. And pin it to the ground or to the wall and say from this moment forward, I shall never have that again because I'm going to drive her to the ground with the javel of God's word. And then be able to walk into a chapel service or on the job or in the church where you attend and say, I have pinned those things to the wall and to the ground and I shall not be bothered with them again. And then feel the peace of the Holy Ghost as it comes over you. And then God presents to you, I'm going to give to you an everlasting covenant of peace. And from this day forward, you shall not have to worry again because it will be peace from this day forward. There is nothing in the world that can be enjoyed anymore than to know that you have gained control over an uncontrollable situation. There is no more peace than to know I have a little power right here. There is no more peace than to be able to walk in and face it just like it is and say, I won that one and I shall win the next one because I feel the peace of Almighty God just in the fact that I won it. I won this one and I didn't have to have the help of Everybody else, I touched God for this need, and God heard me. I'm talking to all of you this morning. There are Zimmerais sitting here. There are people who could be defiant against the leader of the school. You could be defiant against an instructor, but as soon as you learn how, to submit yourself to authority. You are then learning how to submit yourself to the master authority of the universe. And if you can't do it, then you're in trouble before you even start, my friend. And I encourage and I uh, exhort you, learn how. If they say you can't cross this line, let that imaginary line forever stand and don't ever even try to cross it. Don't lean out over it to try to look on the other side. Just get that in your mind. This is the line and this is as far as I'm going to go. And I'm going to do it without asking any questions because that's already settled. When Moses said don't go down to Midian, that should have been good enough. But then when tragedy had struck and 24,000 had died, that should have been enough. But there are they who feels that no matter what happens, I'll get by because I'm Jerome Bourne. Or I'm whoever. Benny Hibbler. Or Richard Fuller. It doesn't matter who you are. 
the word stands for every one of us. Selu or anybody else is not worth the prize that you would get. And then one day when we hear the Lord say, No, Mr. Nobel did not lay aside any money for you. But I'm going to give you the Nobel Peace Prize for religion. Because you met the situation head on. And you succeeded. And you turned your life around. I grant to you an everlasting covenant of peace. Brother Enzi, I don't want anything else in this world. But just to know that I have gained the power. Brother Inslee, pardon me. What did I say? Inslee? Which is it? All right. That's not important right now anyway. The important thing is, I am after the prize. And I'm going to get it. There's some of you young men that will excel. There's some of you who thinks you can slip down to Midian. And you think you can slip back in. And you may. And you may avoid the trap of death. And in the process you might walk right back. And stand in the midst of the camp. And when you do it. It makes you a little defiant. Because you got by. But it's not what we can get by on. But it's what we're going to be. My time is gone and I've already preached 35 minutes and that's about what I generally preach. I have preached an hour and 35, but I'm not going to do that today. When I, when I think today of the prize, no, you won't be given $220,000 tax-free money for winning the battle with yourself. But oh, the peace is more than the money. And to be able to stand and look in the mirror in the morning and say, Oh, buddy, I beat you at your own game. And then to hear the Lord whisper in your ear, You succeeded. And you're going to win. That is worth it. A man stood against a whole nation in the solidarity movement and he won even though he was exiled and put in prison because of his stand against the country with the labor union he was granted last year the Nobel Peace Prize for his stand Martin Luther King received it because his stand for the civil rights issue the man who invented the chip that revolutionized the world and made the computer. He won the Nobel Peace Prize. And for literature, last year a Russian, when he wrote on the trials inside the curtain, he won the prize. Even though he's in prison, he was still a winner. Some of, us, some of us may feel that we're locked in. And it may seem that success never comes. But oh, if you got peace in your heart, there's not a thing like it in the world. I'm a winner.